Hello and welcome back. If you've seen the previous two episodes, uh, the first one shows the building of the stand and the table. So that's a fairly generic sort of uh, setup for any industrial sewing machine really. And the second episode showed the mounting of the cross members to accommodate the machine head and uh, you know placement of the machine head itself. I've actually started already assembling the um, thread stand before I realized that my microphone wasn't plugged in properly so um, yeah I'm just I'll take you through uh, assembly of the thread stand fully so we've got the uh, the speed controller here to uh, mount under the bench there so I'll be positioning that and mounting that also installing the pitman rod we've got a little bottle of oil here that obviously we need to uh, get into the machine here and fill it with oil before we go sewing with it. So as far as the thread stand is concerned we've got that part there which I've already installed this long arm here that accommodates the uh, spool holders here like this one and I've already attached that to the lower shaft there this part here is the part that goes through the tabletop and is uh, bolted up and you could assemble this by you know installing this lower half of the shaft first and then putting all the bits and pieces on but just for um, ease of videoing this I'll show you when it's not in the tabletop as such for assembly and then um, we've got the top half of the stand here and that attaches here with a little joiner like that, join these two shafts together and then we've got the thread guides, thread guides here which attach to the top of the shaft like so and then we have another thread guide here which comes out from the um, thread stand and is positioned closer to the machine itself. So I have obviously I've done these uh, these two here, but I'll show you how to put these uh, cone holders together. These shafts here for the spool holders they come with the nut and spring washer and the washer flat washer already on there. But you you take those off, so the spool holder shaft will sit down in here. So we need to attach the washers and nut onto the back there. So I'll start with the flat washer and then the spring washer and the nut there. And in the um, tool accessories there there's an 8mm spanner. I'm going to use my 8mm spanner here just to tighten these here. like that and then take off the spool stabilizer and the cone holder here you'll notice that there's a slot running through the cone holder that matches up with the these little ears here this little sort of like a little butterfly there that just pushes straight on just push that down into the to locate there, so it's there like that, and then you can put your, let's say, uh, sponge rubber there, and then your stabilizer goes on. So I'll go ahead and um, get the remaining four of those all set to go. And yep, yeah, because uh, it's a five thread, so we've got three needle threads. A top covering thread and a bottom covering thread. We've got five threads so we've got three that sit here one two and three and we've got two on the other arm there. Okay now we've got all five of them there because this arm here is the longer of the two, 
I will position that so that it's along the back of the machine and then I'll install this one so that it's off to the side there so that they don't overhang the table. So just go ahead and put the other arm on the bottom half there like that. I'll just leave it loose in the meantime. There are uh, tightening bolts there for them but I'll leave those reasonably loose in the meantime and then we'll put the joiner on so this is the joiner that joins the two halves and you'll notice inside here not sure if you'll be able to see it but there's a little nipple in there that gives you a little bit of a guide as to how far to put the bottom tube in and that leaves enough room for the top tube to go in there so I'll just I'll go ahead and tighten that one fully. They've also got a um, Phillips and a flathead slot in them as well. If you want to use a screwdriver to get the uh, you know get them tightened reasonably tight, and then you can finish them off with the spanner to get them a bit tighter again. So that's pretty good there. And then we'll install the top half of the stand, go ahead and do that up and then we've got this uh, clamp here and that is to hold this little uh, shaft here and also uh, on the end of that shaft goes this thread guide so we'll put that on that off there and we can slip this over down onto the shaft there we'll leave that loose again in the meantime and she'll probably um, install the rest of this little arm here once the thread stands in the table and then we can go ahead and put the remaining we've got the thread guides here that sort of scenario there but I'll tighten those up once we get the stand in so now it's just a matter of removing the mounting nut two washers and two vibration isolation washers or just probably more likely just to stop the stand from spinning around something a little bit more with a bit of grip to it so the way that that will go together will be the washer there and then plastic washer put it through the table and then a washer underneath sorry plastic washer against the tabletop another washer and then screw that on so the tabletop will be in between these two plastic washers like that sandwiched in here and then you just tighten this nut so I'll go ahead and put that in the holes already drilled it comes like that from the factory so now we're looking from behind and I just need to adjust this slightly come around put that on that side Got the long end here to go along the back and the short end down the side here so I'll go ahead and install that that just do that finger tight at this stage you would normally tighten that up now I'll be taking this back out so I won't do that right now and I've just lined up the top stand there the thread guides and we've got that there too install as well so that will go through here like that and then this other thread guide sits on here like this so the, the threads come down they come from the spool pin here up through the thread guide which you can't see just up just up here and then down through these holes here and onto the 
thread guide of the machine there. So that's the route that the thread takes through there. So I'll go ahead and just uh, temporarily tighten this up just to get it uh, so that we can at least uh, use the machine. The reason I'm not doing everything up really tight is because I'll be moving this machine soon. So let's get that sorted. We need a Phillips or a straight. Straight screwdriver will do the trick. Put that in there. That. Yeah. That one. Something like that. Uh, okay, what, while I'm around the back here, I thought I'd show you this here. The This is the foot lift, presser foot lifter. So the chain will uh, run down, down through a slot here in the machine, between the machine and the table, and attach to the um, foot lift pedal down on the treadle bar. And But first of all, we need to install the this little um, the sprig here that we'll put one of the nuts back onto and put it through one of the holes here and that's going to be used to attach the chain to for the foot lifter I'll put the chain linkage here through so I'll tighten that up it's just a, an 8mm eight, eight there tightened up there and then the chain hangs down here, hooks onto here, and then it gets attached to the uh, pedal down the bottom there. So that's that's ready to go. So that these uh, cables here, we've got the uh, this is the power coming in, the main power, and then we've got the connection to the speed controller. So the speed controller has this cable here that mates up with this cable here. So that feeds down through the hole there, makes things nice and tidy there. So what we can do is we can bring the power cable up through here and screw that into place. Just make sure that's tight there that and then that's pretty much ready to go but you would probably want to cable tie underneath which I'll show you so here we're looking under the table and this is the power cable that I just uh, connected together there I would be tempted to cable tie that probably along like so so this is looking from behind the machine there's the um, treadle there with its linkage point there, pitman rod connects to there, that and then pitman rod you want to be fairly well straight above. I want to install it so this here is pointing forward. We're looking from the back of the machine so I think that around about here is probably a good place put that controller. So I'll go ahead and screw that in. There's just the four holes for the mounts there. I'll go ahead and screw that up to the bench and I'll also go ahead and install the little cable ties here, cable clips to tidy up this power cable here. Okay, I uh, didn't bore you with the details of mounting uh, all this gear here. Really, just suffice it to say, there's uh, two cable clips there for the power cord. I've tightened up the thread stand uh, nut there. I've connected the speed controller cable after installing the speed controller, and I've also connected the chain here for the presser foot lifter. And if we have a look at the top here, you can see that I've raised the chain slightly by one link just to get a little bit more angle on the 
press a foot lifter there. Okay, I've tightened the uh, these thread stands reasonably tight here, and I've just got some domestic sewing machine thread here because that's what I've got easily at hand. So the next thing to do is to fill the oil, and that's just a matter of undoing this little uh, filler cap on the top of the machine here, and we'll get the oil that came with the machine, or any uh, you know standard sewing machine oil and then we just go ahead and pour the oil into the filler hole here and we want to bring it to the correct level which you can see through the sight glass down here I'll get you a closer look at the sight glass it may be a little bit difficult to see there but you'll see the oil level just coming to the bottom of the sight glass there and the level we want to get to is between those two red marks there. Get my torch onto it. So as I fill the oil there that oil level will come up so we want to get it to the top red mark there. That's starting to come up there now. Okay so actually that's all of the oil that came with the machine. You might be able to see there it's not quite it's in between the top and bottom mark which is fine but um, I would be filling that with oil completely up to the top mark that's that's looking pretty good there you can see the dark area at the bottom which is the oil has come up to the top mark there I had to put about another probably about that much extra oil and what's in, left in this container okay well we're getting close to threading up and giving the machine a try so effectively what I'll be doing here is I'll be taking the threads here normally you would have uh, you know the industrial cones this is just what I have handy and we will thread the thread up through the thread guides here just through the thread guide there and then we come down to the loops in the bar there like that and you know fortunately the machine is already threaded so what I can do is um, tie on the threads here which are wrapped around the little silicon oil reservoir I'll show you that in a second and we can tie especially with the looper thread like so and that little basic knot there should go through the eye of the looper so this one here that I'm threading in pink is the top cover attached to the red here it's top cover done and then I will attach the three needle threads to these three yellows here my needle threads are going to be threaded in white before we go too much further I'd like to show you the little reservoirs here for the silicon oil so you'll see there that the uh, needle threads are running through this little oil bath which will fill up with silicon oil and there's a felt pad there that soaks up the silicon oil and just coats the thread as it goes through the system through the needles so let's get the silicon oil in there put the little cover down just move that little protector out of the way that's an eye guard there so I'm going to unthread the needles I'll just uh, trim the needle threads here just close to the needle is fine We'll pull the threads through, pull these through, they might be a little bit tangled there, just until the white comes through there. We'll do one at a time. So I'm just helping by pulling the thread through here. It releases a little bit of the tension here as the thread comes through there. There's one. Uh, if you lift the presser foot it uh, releases the tensions here as well. So. 
makes it a little bit easier. And then that remaining yellow thread might be a bit easier if you're right-handed to get in from the right-hand side, which I could probably do, but my camera is in the way at the moment. So there's one thread there, right needle there. Just see that we've got a little bit of a tangle going here. Just want to make sure that this cover thread here is all set to go there. If I can grab it. This is just a protective piece of paper to stop the, any, you know, any uh, corrosion happening on the uh, throat plate there or the feed dogs bottom of the presser foot there. And should be able to just grab that red one. Yep, that's better there. Now this is the test piece of fabric here. So here we've got the three yellow needle threads, so the three rows of thread there, and we've got the top cover is red, and then if we have a look underneath we've got white as the bottom cover there. So, and then you can see that it's done a nice chain off there and this is like a uh, t-shirting material. I don't have any scrap t-shirting at the moment so I'm just going to be using uh, just basic sort of cotton really. Uh, it's an old cotton sheet for testing and if we want to grab the looper thread which I think is going to be pink. Uh, here's the red coming through. That's, oh no, so the top's going to be pink. Just help that through. That bit of a help there. There. That's the three needles and the top cover. And then we've got the looper to bring through. We slide this back. We can actually get a good look at the looper here. This is the, the looper here. We've got a little bit of a tangle on that looper I can see there, so let's just re-thread the looper eye. And it's a bit tangled back here as well. There we go. It's coming through nicely there now. Pull the red through. We'll make sure that the needle threads are out of the way there. Just thread that looper eye front to back there. I won't go through um, you know, the entire uh, threading process at this stage. I really just um, want to show you what the machine is capable of doing. And if we have a look over this side here, here's the other reservoir for the lower. Uh, this one here actually lubricates the points of the needles. So the needles dip down into a little felt. We'll just get a bit of, bit of oil in there, silicon oil. And if we have a close look around here, this is the back end of the little silicon oil reservoir. And there's a tube here with a wick in it that comes right around here and up to these felts here. And the tips of the needle dip into the felt pads there and help lubricate that. So that could take a little while for the oil to wick all the way you know, through this tube here and up into this felt. I'll show you down here. This is underneath the looper area here. There's the looper there. Down here is a little gauze and that is a return for oil that gets pumped. These machines don't need manual oiling. Uh, well not once you start using them. So uh, any excess oil will pull up in here and drain through this little gauze here. So you know that needs to be kept clean. Uh, there's another one under through in here as well. It's a bit hard to see. Back in there, another return, oil return. If we have a, uh, just a quick look at the manual here, when the, so manual lubrication, always turn off power and unplug the machine when you supply oil by hand. Apply two or three drops of oil to the needle bar, number three, down here, by hand, 
when the machine is used for the first time or left unused for some time and also at the top of the needle bar there so I'll go ahead and oil that the manual by the way is um, not too bad yeah it's it's reasonably easy to understand there's a, a decent uh, threading diagram there you know with um, detailed little uh, pictures there it goes through you know setup of the cross members presser foot pressure uh, differential feed ra ratio I won't go into that at this stage uh, stitch length adjusting the thread tension cleaning the machine replacing the needles making sure that the needle is inserted fully oil replacement draining the oil cleaning checking and cleaning the oil filter which I think is different on this model this has got a, a, an external oil filter and then we go through you know the parts listing so pretty handy assembling the thread stand the tools and bits and pieces you get from the machine uh, optional folder assembly and there's another little guide here that goes through some of the uh, functions of the control panel key functions that's this control panel here okay I've plugged the power in there's an on off switch around the back you may have noticed earlier so we'll turn the machine on there's a little fan you might have noticed the needle position automatically took the needle bar to the top I'll go ahead and oil that so I'll oil the top of the needle bar annually and the bottom there as well that's just your standard telling you that it's basically ready to go there's a little bit of a fan noise I guess it's keeping the motor and the electronics cool I'll bring my microphone down to it it's not overly noisy let's have a close look here I'll start by just getting some fabric underneath the plate there I'm not I'm not going to go doing any fancy hem seams or anything like that and I'll start by just manually turning the machine a few stitches just to make sure everything is doing as it should and then we'll give it a bit of, bit of juice here quite nice and there we have pink top cover and red underneath and you won't be able to see the needle threads there against the white fabric but uh, three rows of needle thread there so what you can do is you can take the center needle out and you get um, this sort of seam on the likes of t-shirting where if I can give you a close look that's, this, that's the kind of uh, twin needle cover stitch with no top cover on the t-shirt just the, the bottom cover so what you would do is um, you would remove the center needle and unthread the top cover here to do the t-shirting seams I'm going to remove this guard here so that you can get a better view of what's going on so you can see this top looper coming across and this stroke here the bottom loop is coming through and it's picking up the threads off the uh, back of the needles underneath here and then needles rise this looper comes across and then these needle points kind of skip over the pink and down and behind like that And you'll notice that the machine always positions when you take your foot off the treadle it positions the needles at the top and nicely chaining out the back there 
it's not really a good idea to run the machine for too long with no fabric under the presser foot there it can cause quite a bit of wear yeah the less that you can run the machine with no fabric under the better and then we can just run straight back on just a note here too that the this is a little sight glass for the oil pump so if you if the oil pump fails or something fails in the oil pumping area uh, you'll not see oil coming up through here like this you can see that the it's pumping oil there so this sight glass here is a little bit like an oil light on a car uh, you know if there's a problem with the oil uh, system in a car the oil light will come on to tell you that there's low pressure this is a similar thing it's just a, a sight glass there for you to uh, check oil pressure so yeah that's that's going really well actually I'm, I'm really impressed with this machine it um, you know it seems to be of a, a very good quality it sounds really good Uh, just to give you a quick idea of what the control panels for one of the settings is you can set the maximum speed between 200 and 6,000 stitches a minute the default is 5,000 needle stop position you can set the um, needle up or needle down or off there's three settings soft start that is where the machine slowly takes off it's like a bit of a ramp up and then you've got the soft start sewing speed between 200 and 1500 stitches a minute the defaults 400 the number of stitches for the soft start between 1 and 15 this is the default is 1 minimum speed is 200 to 500 the minimum speed is set to 200 by default uh, then we've got some other uh, parameters here the needle goes up automatically as power is turned on uh, down position adjustment, up position adjustment, speed curve, so you can set the speed curve I think through this here and um, motor rotation direction that's all preset in the factory because you wouldn't want to run the machine in the reverse uh, rotation there so um, there's just a, a brief overview of a uh, industrial cover stitch machine it is, I'm really impressed with it, it's a nice smooth machine. I hope you enjoyed that overview of the ZOJ C5000 series cover stitch machine and uh, keep an eye out for more videos. I've got an industrial overlocker and an industrial plane sewer to set up soon so keep an eye out for more videos and thanks very much for watching.